Speaking of good wins and losable spots, let's talk about LSU. Mm -hmm. We need to have the LSU Another conversation, game. Dan. Yeah. Need to have the LSU conversation. LSU won by 25 over Ole Miss. 45 to 20. Ole Miss jumped out to a 17 to 3 lead. Yeah. Early in the second quarter, I'm watching this game. I'm thinking, man, this thing's freaking over. I took Ole Miss. I had Ole Miss plus one and a half, I think. Whatever the line closed out. I may have I locked up Ole Miss, yeah. LSU from that point forward took control. Whatever momentum Ole Miss had in the first quarter went poof, gone. Yeah. Completely gone. It swung hard in the direction of the Tigers, and especially Jane Daniels, Dan. Yeah. Again, just a monster freaking showing for this kid. Monster showing for Jane Daniels. The Tigers, from that point forward, went on a 42-3 to run. Yeah. Five of those scores were touchdowns due to either the arm or legs of one Jane Daniels, who was basically unstoppable for most of this football game. In the end, LSU ends up cruising to victory. We talk about the Ole Miss rushing attack a lot. At least I did. That mm -hmm. was one of the reasons that I cited for wanting to pick Ole Miss in this football game. Had a lot of faith in it. My question all along has been, what happens if the rushing game doesn't work? What happens, what happens if it doesn't yeah. work? In it, we got a little bit of a glimpse into that. It didn't really work. It was fine, but it didn't really work the way it's been working. More was asked of Jackson Dart. I don't think he was bad. But he was really up against it because what LSU did is they brought the heat. Mm -hmm. They brought the heat, especially in the second half. He had guys draped all over him every snap. It was like a freaking jailbreak. So it was, I thought, a really balanced, a really awesome showing for LSU, the way they rallied from that early deficit and was able to take this game in hand and just dominate. This was a dominant showing against a top 10 team. And now we got to start having that conversation about LSU. <laughs> another like, conversation, sure. Another con LSU goes into a bye week. What do they got? Two losses now? Mm -hmm. Five and two? They go into a bye week. They've got Bama first week of November. Games at home, by the way. Mm -hmm. A lot more interesting now, Dan. Totally. Feels like Jane Daniels is getting better. Feels like LSU is getting better. Mm -hmm. LSU is 4-1 and one in conference. They're tied atop the SEC West. I don't know what the ceiling is for this team. I guess I thought I knew after the Florida State loss, but maybe not. Maybe they're getting better. And it feels like suddenly this is a team that has a lot in front of them. I would not want to sleep on LSU at this point. I would not want to take this team for granted because it feels to me like everything is trending in a really, really positive direction. Nice little second chance Saturday for transfer quarterbacks all over the globe, right? Between Bo Nix and uh, Jaden Daniels. I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting a ton of guys, but like uh, across the board, it felt like a really nice day. I mean, transferring is just a reality of the sport. So you speak about poof and disappearance, right? Poof. There goes poof. Ole Miss. Poof. There goes the lead. Uh, poof. There goes Ty's statement preseason that Brian Kelly's going to have quarterback issues and no. decision making issues on his hands. No. Poof. It turns out has not <laughs> happened at all. Has not happened at all. Poof. Even he can't screw this one up. He cannot. Poof. There goes Ty saying good luck with Brian Kelly. Good luck. Um, <laughs> after week one, you look like a genius. I am not a genius. Don't convince yourself that I, I am. I'm not. Um. Yeah, LSU figures out very basic special teams maneuvers against Florida State. We're having a very different conversation about LSU. Also, I think it adds to the conversation about Tennessee's excellence in the way that they were able to manhandle LSU. It's becoming less of a slight against the Tigers and more of a compliment about what Tennessee's ceiling on offense. And that game was a complete game for Tennessee. But yeah, that affects how, you know, the lens through which we look at Tennessee, um, even yep. alongside what they did against Alabama. So... Yeah, LSU is dangerous. Jaden Daniels, especially what I think is a more and more uh, freed feeling from Jaden Daniels. You know, he's running the ball, he's throwing the ball, he's spreading the ball around to various uh, receivers. It's not just, you know, the Malik Neighbors, Keyshawn Boutte show. It's all these guys. And then on defense with some of the young guys that are coming in, by the way, speaking of conversations that need to be had, whatever the hell the ceiling of Harold Perkins is for this oh, LSU man. defense, he's so I good, don't right? know. He's so good. Harry Perky um, is going to be ridiculous. I thought the game plan, the adjustments in the second half, just say, okay, 
whatever happens, it's going to be because Jackson Dart is excellent. And that's what LSU forced. They were not going to get beat by Judkins. Zach Evans is out and, you know, he tried to play, he tried to warm up. It wasn't happening for him. So LSU is evolving into an excellent wild card. I don't think they're a complete team. I don't think they're a fully realized team, but they have a, de- a dependable playmaking quarterback, an improving defense, and I'm sorry to say it for you, really good coach. <laughs> so uh, dangerous. I think they're still, uh, you know, a, a step behind Alabama if Alabama is fully healthy, but I still don't love the Alabama offensive line and, you know, the 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 modes that Alabama's offense goes into at times, but LSU, man, even if losing to Alabama, like they can go 10 and three with a bowl win, right? They're, well, here's, a, they're here's what's a, interesting about that Bama game and yeah. specifically with LSU the rest of the way. In Baton Rouge. Uh, in Baton Rouge. Yeah, in yeah. Baton Rouge. The remainder of LSU's schedule in November outside of that Bama game, which, you know, usually first weekend in November, at Arkansas, home against UAB, at Texas A&M. This version of LSU that we saw yesterday beats Arkansas, UAB, and A&M, no problem. Yeah. This version of this team. Uh, sure. Not to say you get them, because like you said, they're not a fully realized product, and I agree with that. And by the way, never look overlook Arkansas against LSU. LSU fans Never overlook Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. But what the, the version of LSU that we saw against Ole Miss beats all three of those teams. Sure. Also, with respect to that Bama game, I do think it's interesting. I do think it's more interesting. Before this week, before this week, before this win, Mm-hmm. That game between Alabama and LSU, if you would have played it yesterday, the point spread would have been somewhere around nine or ten points. Mm-hmm. With this win, that line's coming down, man. Yeah. Do not be surprised if Bama on the road is something like a seven, seven and a half point favorite. Like, I don't know. It's got a Tennessee feel to it with respect to the point spread. Because LSU's getting better, and I think Vegas will take notice. Just saying. Keep the your thing, eyes peeled in two weeks from now. The thing, big picture, now we, I know we have to move on. There's a lot of games. The thing that worries me about LSU is the way they started the Auburn game. The way they no, started this no. game. The way they started the Tennessee game. That, like, they need to take a punch in order to wake up and sort of taste their own blood. Mm. All fine and good against a what we now probably perceive to be an overrated Ole Miss team. But... If Bryce Young, a healthy Bryce Young, which I'm not so sure he's still, I don't think he is at this moment, but if he is in a couple weeks, a healthy Bryce Young or a healthy whoever in a big bowl game, um, a healthy KJ Jefferson and Arkansas, if that's where he's going to be physically, if they go up 20 to three, it might be a little bit different than Ole Miss going up 17 to three or whatever. So that's what I'd be worried about the slow starts and the like. Holy hell, it's the end of the first quarter and we're already down blah 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 to blah blah blah. That's the worry at this point, but it's first year Brian Kelly and he's winning, so all good things.